if you had money to make a better world, what would you do? When I was in fourth grade, a teacher asked us that question. And at that point in life, society had taught me a couple things about money. If I worked hard, I could make a lot of it. And if I made a lot of it, I should try to be a good person and help some people in need. But what kind of people? What kind of need? I don't know, I was like 10. <laughs> so it wasn't until about 15 years later that I started to seriously look for answers at the local crisis center. Now, most people have heard about these centers because of the suicide hotline, but I had read that many of the callers were lonely, everyday people who just needed to talk through some issues. So I thought that if I volunteered to take enough calls, then I could use my top-tier education and brand-new prefrontal cortex to figure out the best cause for my philanthropic dollars. Simple, right? The first week on the job, I learned my first lesson. I was still clueless about social issues. My fancy computer science degree had taught me everything I know about software, but nothing about these weird carbon-based life forms that I actually have to talk to. <laughs> the second week, I learned that, luckily, there were much more qualified people sitting right next to me. These were the incredible volunteers and social workers who sacrificed so much to run this critically important service. But it wasn't until the third week that I started to see the full picture. That was when I realized that the people who had the most knowledge, who knew exactly where society was failing, they were the ones calling in. But money is power, and most of our callers were powerless to do, to do anything about it. That's the moment that I stopped asking what and started asking why. Why did I, the guy who made decent money writing software, why did I have the most financial power in the room when I was the furthest away from the issues? Why do a handful of billionaires who are much, much further away have more power than all of our social workers and all of our teachers combined? And why do the people who are struggling the most, who by definition have the most intimate experiences with these issues, why do they have no power at all? What they don't tell you in the fourth grade is that there is something odd about philanthropy. Money is at the top, knowledge is at the bottom, and the decisions are coming from the wrong direction. We are all trying to get to a better world, but in this one, the best place to help people in need is over cocktails at a black tie gala. That's what we call progress in this system. So why? Don't we build a better one? I'm here today because I'm tired of what we call progress. I'm tired of watching good people struggling to make the impact that I know they want to see. And I am tired of dealing with the same broken system when there is an alternative that is so simple I can share it with you in six words. Are you ready? Give people free money to donate. Give people free money to donate. Give people free money to donate. That's all there is to it. Every year, private donors and government programs put trillions of dollars into the U.S. nonprofit sector. So let's just set aside some of that money, give it out to every member of the community, and see what causes they donate to. This is a simple idea that I call universal basic philanthropy, the belief that everyone should have an economic voice in social impact. And everyone means you. A few moments ago, I asked what you would do if you had money to make a better world. And I know that that's a really hard question, but I also know that something came to mind first. So what was it? Did it have to do with poverty, education, the environment, something else? Whatever it was, I want you to now think about why that issue came to mind. I want you to think about that existentially unique lifetime of values, experiences, people that have led you to see this one issue in a way that nobody else can. And I want you to realize that every person in this room, every executive on Wall Street, every stranger calling a suicide hotline right now, they each have their own story, they each have their own cause. 
the problems are getting bigger and the system is breaking. But if you just take a step back, then I think you'll find some hope in seeing what I've come to see now, an ocean of living, breathing knowledge waiting to be set free. All we need is the right system. Give people free money to donate. Simple, right? In about 2019, I got tired also of ranting about hypotheticals and decided it was time to get to work. So I got together with some of the coolest people in the world to start a new nonprofit called Token IBIS. That's token, I-B-I-S, like the bird. We have one mission, to prove that universal basic philanthropy works. Here's the model. Raise money from traditional philanthropy, partner with local nonprofits, and sign up community members just like you to get free money and donate. All of this runs on a web app to make the process as streamlined as possible. In 2020, we launched with $3,000 and 10 nonprofit partners. The initial seed funding came from me. I had finally figured out the best place to spend my money. So using that foundation, we went out and started tabling at community events and got random strangers to sign up and participate. By the time that we finished, my $3,000 had empowered 94 people to make 196 donations. Let me rephrase that for you. A computer program turned one check from a socially clueless engineer <laughs> into about 200 community-driven decisions before anyone spent a single penny. That is what we call progress in the right system. By 2021, the project was well underway. We raised more money and started giving it out every week to um, our regular users. We built in new features into the app to encourage engagement. And we analyzed the data. And right there, in the pristine language of zeros and ones, you could see the connections, collaborations between nonprofits, social networks of new philanthropists, money coming down, and information flowing up. The idea worked, the model worked, the technology worked. Universal basic philanthropy worked. As of today, July 30th, 2022, our community has made over 5,400 donations worth over $76,000. Our team made this happen with 100% volunteer effort and software that is completely free and open source. Today, Token IBIS is just one organization, but the blueprint is out there now. Once this movement gets off the ground, then the nonprofit sector will only be the beginning. Once it reaches critical mass, the people in power will realize that the way that we fund most public goods, our education, healthcare, infrastructure, law, politics, science, it's all wrong. Money is at the top, knowledge is at the bottom, and the world is too complicated for anybody to fix from the top down. It's time for us to empower all of us to make decisions from the bottom up. It's time to build a free market for public goods. So let's build it here. Let's start the future right now in Albuquerque, New Mexico. All we need is your voice. And if you have money, <laughs> we'll spend your money. If you have nonprofits, We'll call your nonprofits. But if you have neither, that's okay too. I think that we need to hear from you most of all. Because I'll be the first to admit that after all these years, I can still be a little clueless about most social issues. I don't have that many great answers for my fourth grade teacher. All I have is a new way to ask. But I think it's a pretty good one. So I will do it one more time. If you had money to make a better world, what would you do? Yes.